Kapiti Coast Mayor Guru. Kia ora, Guru. Kia ora, Nigel. And look, um, I must tell you, we are not talking about the rugby, right? Right, well, we won't talk about rugby, no. But as I was saying to the listeners this morning, I enjoyed the game and I congratulate Australia. If we'd had 17 players on the field, we still would have lost. That was just one of those games that Australia played magnificently. Yeah, that's true. Mm. That's true, but uh, we shall not talk about it. We won't talk about it, no. Now, you had a meeting last Thursday and that Why Can I Library Review came up. What was the outcome of that? Well, we, there's a set of recommendations that we, that they put through. And um, one of the first urgent needs was, of course, um, having a look at the other properties like community halls and also our uh, pensioner housing and stuff. But um, having said that, they also noted that um, it was good to see that even before the recommendations uh, from them was officially tabled, council staff had already been working on it. So that's really good. And of course, we've got a whole range of internal um, measures to take in terms of uh, our the reporting uh, methods, uh, the processes that we follow, um, and also the um, the issue of uh, the other culture of saying that we've got no more money and therefore we shouldn't report this. I mean, that is of concern. But I think that once the processes are sorted out, that once you know that there's something wrong, you need to report that irrespective of whether you think it can be fixed or not. That's the risk management approach that needs to be taken. Yes. Yeah, and, and that's the key. Yeah, I think that's uh, one of the problems. The staff have got to the point of thinking, yeah, well, it needs to be done, hey, but we've got no money, so why carry on pushing the barrow sort of thing? Yeah, so therefore, uh, the, that's, that's a non-decision. Yeah. Some, a non-decision can sometimes be a decision. So by by saying, oh, no use taking it up, they're actually making a decision not to escalate the issue up for the, the decision-making ranks. Finally, it should come to the senior uh, management, uh, and they should then decide, okay, this is what the situation is. They need to bring it then to the councillors to make the political decision, what are the consequences of not doing something, and what is the long-term cost of this. Right. Now, the community hall in uh, Nahina Street, uh, that's a, a big decision you've got to make on that. Now, I had a ring from a listener shortly after we talked last week, and they said, well, Fitaraya's up for uh, sale. Why don't the council buy that and bulldoze down the old um, community centre and use the Fitaraya centre as their main you know, area? And I thought that was quite a good idea. Has the council thought about that? Well, I suppose um, we need to think this carefully in terms of you know, if you want to leave that place. I understand from very reliable sources that that building there was, when they were leased out to Fitoria, was half a million dollars a year. Yeah, I think this uh, listener was suggesting that the council actually buy the building because the owner will, will, won't uh, let it out for individual shops or something like that, but they will sell yeah. the whole building. Well, you, you, when you want to create a civic centre, I mean, that sort of civic centre should be in the civic sphere, which is where you have the council building, you have the library, you have the swimming pool, you have the women's centre there, uh, you know, school, uh, close by the shopping area, you know, so you, when you're developing a civic centre, you don't do put something really far away from that centre, hmm. and you add a cons- add a considerable cost. Okay, so the civic centre, what is the outcome of that? Uh, have you had well, any reports uh, it, back? It's, it's been tested regularly. Um, uh, we need to discuss with the community. I think this is going to happen next year early. Okay. In terms of uh, the community, what sort of facilities do they want? What you know, like in uh, I love the place in Lebanon. Have you seen that one? Yes. Yep. Yeah, uh, and but public need to have an input, particularly the users. Okay, uh, you had a presentation on homelessness. Have we got problems with homelessness on the Capiti Coast? That was put up by John Pritchard, Hutt City Council. What did he come up with? That, you know what they've done is over the last eighteen months, and they've been working on it, and they have put something like. Um, uh, almost a million dollars or more into the project. Uh, what we don't have, we don't have a mandate on that, but the housing task force and earlier on uh, suggested uh, demand measurement in terms of seeing what the demand is. And the demand goes from one end is the homelessness, uh, people who've got no places to live, um, a roof over their heads, uh, right to the private, um, say, you know, the, the housing, the ordinary people who buy houses and sell houses, you know, the whole spectrum in the middle, you have transition houses, uh, you have social houses, 
this whole area. They wanted a, and that council has been, we've been a bit slow on that, but we're starting to get cracking. And so uh, we've had uh, some research being done on how many houses we've got and what the situation is. But the what is homelessness is actually difficult to measure. Now, you would remember in 2016 when we had the two floods in Otaki. Yes. Suddenly we discovered two families living in garages. So, so like it's only... Yes, only when something like emergency, then you find out. Otherwise, you don't know how many people are living in garages at the moment. Okay. You don't know how many people are sleeping in somebody's couch. And then uh, we don't know uh, how some of the houses might be overcrowded. So even though they've got a roof or they hate somewhere to sleep, they are actually uh, uh, homeless. Yes. So it's more than just people sleeping on the streets. This is people who are actually having to try and find somewhere under a tent or, as you say, in a garage. Yeah. That's well, homelessness I mean, I, here. But I've come across that myself. I mean, in, in um, last, early this year, last year, um, there was a complaint in Otaki about some, in the rural area, of uh, some drainage area in the neighbourhood complained. Council staff had gone in and they found out there were six or seven people who were homeless but been housed in a rural area. So by right, what would happen is they could have been chucked out if council had gone in and said, look, this is against the rules, blah, 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 so you're not catering for these people. Are you there? Yes, yeah. So um, what would have happened then is if you'd done a trick like this, but we worked with those people. The guy rang us. Myself, uh, James Coates, and the local EV leader, yes. uh, Rupini Waka, we worked together, got the council staff to put them through what are the things they need to do. Because if we do the heavy handed sort of uh, tick box approach and say, look, you breach all these rules and regulations, you've got to, you've got to close it down, where will they go? Mm, that's right. So it's That so- was one area. Yes. The yeah. other one was um, uh, remember, I, I picked up a fight with the Housing New Zealand about the two houses that were left vacant for, for months and months and people who were looking for houses. When the news came out, suddenly I was inundated with calls and stuff, and one of the calls was from this guy who was living in a tent in a rancho temporarily. His wife was pregnant, and he had a daughter who was going to school. And, you know, it was, and winter was coming. What the heck? That made me really weep. They were, it's really bad, eh? It is. But we were able to work with them in, through MSD, get them a... a um, they put them to a motel. But the key to this, is, this is a central government issue. Local authorities have got no money, no funding to put into this. But if you go out and say, this is our, pro- it is our problem in the sense that we have to facilitate some kind of solutions. Long term, we have to talk to our councils, uh, our communities and say, look, do we need to put money into this? And how we are going to do this? And that's a paper that's going to come to us this week on doing that because if you readily accept the responsibility for this the central government will keep on dumping stuff on us and who and this is a job that they need to pay and no money is going to be there all right where's this paper but coming from uh guru that's going to be presented. this is an internal paper because we've had um, a dedicated um, staff member specialist in this area working on this for the last um, four months in terms of uh, getting the demand management of it and what are the opportunities working with what are the government agencies and all that and uh, recently we had um, the new Associate Minister of Housing, uh, Chris Farfoy. Right. Uh, we took him around the district and met uh, people in, or in um, Pakagriki, the Wainui Fenua group, because they're looking at housing in that area using trans NZTLN. Took him down to um, uh, Otaki, talking to uh, the Maori Trust there. They've got land there. So um, we, are, we, are, we are starting to get uh, in the speed in this area. Guri, we're running out of time, but thanks very much for your time this morning, and we'll try and grab you next Monday if we can, please. Very good. And, and you can forget about this issue of uh, politics. I mean, the council has not been able to talk to the media. As long as the council is not paying for that, you're free to call us up and ask and put us and ask some accountability on anything you like. Right. Yes, I see um, Ray Wallace, the mayor of uh, Upper Hutt, he got into trouble over the weekend. <laughs> Somebody was praising how good he was to new immigrants to New Zealand. Well, that's not allowed. <laughs> that's absolutely not allowed. That's, no. that's dreadful. Yes, it was. He should have stopped it, really. Yeah, that's right. OK, thanks very much for your time, Guru. Cheers, mate. Here we are, Mayor of Kapiti here on Beach FM. Beach FM, locals talking to locals.